In this video, I'm going to take rocks that I've purchased from a variety of locations and turn them into beautiful, shiny stones. Let's start with the Bahia agate. This came from the rock shed. Next up, we have this porcelain jasper. This too came from the rock shed. Here's some prairie agate. I got these from a Facebook seller. This Crawley Ridge agate came from that same Facebook seller. This Mozambique agate I got from the rock shed. Here's a piece of island agate that came from Highland Park Lapidary. This Royal Imperial Jasper came from my local rock shop, Nature's Treasures. This Turritella agate came from a Smithville area rock shop. It was a piece of slabbing rough that I took a hammer to. Here's some Montana agate that came from Nature's Treasures in Austin. This blue lace agate came from Kingsley North. The Malawi agate came from Highland Park Lapidary. This blue Botswana agate came from the Rock Shed. Everybody's favorite Crazy Lace agate also came from the Rock Shed. Here's some Desert Jasper, also from the Rock Shed. And finally, this petrified palm wood, which came from that Smithville, Texas area rock shop. This is a little fuller than I like, but it'll be fine. It'll grind down. Soon enough, I'm going to add about six tablespoons of the 6090 grit. Let's get some water in it. Yeah, that ought to do it. All right, let's get it buttoned up, and we'll get it on the tumbler. I'll let this run for oh, a week, 10 days, and then I'll check it and follow up with this video. These agates have been tumbling in the coarse grit for many, many months, and quite frankly, I'm ready to move on. Some of these are not going to be perfect because I'm just tired of tumbling these things. So let's look at them really quickly here. These are our Bahia agates. Here's our porcelain jasper. Here we have the prairie agates. These are our little Crawley Ridge agates. Of course, the Mozambique agates. Here's our island agate. This is one where I just wasn't going to take the time to make it perfectly smooth. Here's our Royal Imperial Jasper. Nice colors, but not perfect tumbles, unfortunately. The Tortella. My little pieces weren't particularly good pieces to try to tumble. I told you before I broke these off myself from a slab of tumbling rough and Hopefully it'll still take a good shine. The Montana Agate. It's a couple of big spalls, but that's all right. Should take a nice shine. A little blue lace. The Malawi. One of these broke a little bit. The Blue Botswana. Of course, everybody's favorite, Crazy Lace. Here's our Desert Jasper. And finally, our Petrified Palm Wood. I think you're really gonna like this when it's shined up.
Oh, there we go. That's the 18 pound bowl from my Thumbler's Vibratory Tumbler, the UV18. I'll go ahead and get this set up, get it going, and show you the first step. For this 18 pound bowl, I use two tablespoons of silicon carbide 220 grit, and I let this go for two days. Now, I did add more stones from different batches I'm working on just to help fill the barrel. Two days have passed, and this is how it looks. You see that light slurry. Time to do the washout, so I'm going to add a little bit of, this is Dawn dishwashing detergent. And I'm going to add a little bit of water. I'll let this go for an hour or two. It'll get nice and sudsy, and then I will rinse these rocks off and show you the next step. In case you're wondering how I clean out my Thumbler's 18 pound bowl inside in the sink, which I know everyone's screaming at me going, no, not in the sink. Well, here's what I do. So I fill it up with some water. It's nice and sudsy. Get it up close to the top. And then I take it and I put it into this thing. Strainer system I found on Amazon. So you see there's definitely a little grit in there, a little slurry we need to get rid of. So I get a little brush out and I try to get off a majority of that, like so. This is what you don't want to go down your sink. Into the bucket. So that's pretty clean now. I can then go ahead and clean both of these up. I'll show you right now what I do with this. This strainer, I lift out the middle section here. It's kind of heavy now. And I continue to flush the rocks. Making sure I stay over the little container below me there so nothing goes down the drain. Or I should say, very little goes down the drain. I know some of it escapes. There you go. So now I'll be able to rinse these off and not worry about stuff getting down the drain. This gets dumped outside. For step two, I use 600 grit silicon carbide, one tablespoon, and also one tablespoon of borax. Get that going for two days, and then I repeat that same wash cycle. It has been two days in the 600 grit. As you can see, there's a nice little slurry going on. Let me get this cleaned up and I'll show you the next step. For my third step in the polishing process, I use one tablespoon of the silicon carbide 1500 grit and one tablespoon of borax. I get that going and let it run for two days. Two days have passed with the 1500 grid. Here's how it looks. Now I'll get it cleaned up once again and move on to the last step. For the final step, I use one tablespoon of the aluminum oxide polish and one tablespoon of the borax. Just like before, I let this go for two days. And guess what, folks? We will be done. It has been another two days, and we are finally done with this eight-day four-step polishing process. So next thing I will do is a washout cycle, and I will rinse them off carefully, dry them off, and we will take a closer look and see how these turned out. Oh, there's a bahia agate going. Oh, I think I see some jasper. Yeah, and some more agates in there. Ooh, this is gonna be fun. After many, many months, these stones are finally finished. Whew. Let's take a closer look and let's see how they turned out. Starting with the Bahia agates. I have three of these, they turned out pretty nice. Couldn't do anything about that fracture right there. I was tired of tumbling these things, so. I had to give up on my goal to make them absolutely flawless. 
my patience wore out. Still took a great shine. It's a good looking rock. Here's another Bahia agate. This one turned out pretty nice. I like that pattern in it. And then there's this little Bahia agate, which has that little quartz pocket. That is, it's nice. I like that. This one is nearly flawless. A couple little dimples, but hey, what are you gonna do? It's nature. Here's a piece of the porcelain jasper. This didn't take the glossy polish that I was looking for. It's more of a satiny finish. Not bad looking, but I really prefer the mirror-like finish that I get on these uh, agates. Here's another piece of the porcelain jasper. It's an attractive rock. It's not a super high polished shine like I like. And the last piece of the porcelain jasper is this larger piece. Looks like it has uh, some sort of metallic element in there. It's a good looking rock. I just wish it had a mirror-like finish. Next we have these prairie agates. These turned out okay. I've seen better prairie agates, but these aren't too bad. This prairie agate's a little more interesting than that last one. I like some of the detail I see in this. Took a nice shine, it's a good tumble. The last prairie agate is this one. This one's interesting. I like those bands in there. So yeah, I think of the three, this one's probably my favorite. And we'll play that game. Which of the three of all these different rocks is, is favorite? So I'll pick mine, but you at home, you know, be sure and pick yours. Next up, we have the three Crowley Ridge agates. This one, even though it's a Crowley Ridge, it doesn't really have that look. So it's a good looking little rock, took a nice polish. It's a good tumble, but not too interesting otherwise. This Crawley Ridge agate is a little more interesting. You see lots of banding in this one. Crystal pocket in there. Unfortunately, I couldn't get rid of all these little fractures. This one's not bad though. This Crawley Ridge, however, is my favorite of the three. I like that banding a lot right there. I think this one turned out pretty nice. Clearly and easily my favorite. Next up are these Mozambique agates. These are always nice tumbles. They're very dark, but when you look closely, you can see some banding in most of these. Maybe not this particular one. Uh, however, there is that little quartzy sort of pocket there. Maybe some fine banding I can just make out. And then there's this one. I like the look of this one. If you tumble these long enough and get them smooth like this, they can take such a beautiful polish. This one doesn't have a lot in it. You see that sort of, uh, what you'd call that? <laughs> anyway, it's, it's an interesting detail within that stone. Here's another Mozambique. This one has some interesting detail in it as well, right there at the tip. Like a waterline banding. I think that's pretty cool. Otherwise, it's just sort of plain. Not my favorite. This last Mozambique is my favorite, and I will show you why. If I can get that shine off of it there. I think this one has some really cool detail in it. I like those, those little bubbles in there. As you can see, it takes a great shine. Worth the many months of coarse grit tumbling, in my opinion. Others may disagree. I respect that. Everyone has their, their own opinion. How they like their shiny rocks to look. I prefer mine to look nice and smooth like this. But that takes great patience and lots of tumbling. And next up is this island agate. This one was tumbling for, oh, I don't know, maybe five months. <laughs> And I was just not willing to continue tumbling to try to smooth out these, these pockets. 
These are agates that normally one would cut in half to reveal the banding on the inside, but I decided to tumble it just to see what it would look like. And I think it still looks really nice. I imagine if we were to cut this, we would find some banding in there. This one has come a long way, <laughs> but I, I like the way it turned out. Great shine. Here's one of the two pieces of the Royal Imperial Jasper that I threw in the tumbler. This one turned out pretty nice. It's not flawless, but it's not too, too bad. It's got a really great color, sort of a burgundy red color. I like that a lot. And here's the other piece of the Royal Imperial Jasper. This one I tried and tried and tried to tumble smooth, but these fractures just would not go away. They kept popping up, so I just decided, okay, fine, I'm done. I'm gonna go ahead and polish it as is. So it's not a perfect tumble, but it's a good looking rock otherwise. That green is just beautiful. It's like an emerald green. So this would be my favorite of the two, I think, just because I like the green. Oh, my three little pieces of Turrotella agate did not turn out very good, but it was because of the pieces I started with. I told you I hammered off these pieces from some, sl some slabbing rough and they just weren't very good. It took an okay shine, but you can see there were just too many, too many areas that weren't ever going to get smoothed out. And there's this little guy, this little piece of the Turrotella. Still not flawless. And finally, this piece of the Turrotella. Oh well, they can't all be winners. <laughs> I don't even think I have a favorite with these three. I'll save this one. I like that little profile of, of the snail shell right there. Next up, we have the Montana agate. This stuff took months to tumble smooth. It's very hard. However, because it's so hard, it does take a great shine. It's the one thing I absolutely love about Montana agate. If you have the patience to let it tumble and tumble and tumble until it gets smooth, whew, it can take a brilliant polish. This piece is not super interesting. It does have some properties in it that are interesting looking, I suppose, but overall it's kind of, yeah, just sort of plain. This big piece could not tumble smoothly. I, I was tempted to break that off. I nearly did at one point, but I decided to leave it on. And now it's just, well, you see, it is what it is. It has a great shine, some interesting detail in, in it. But that just distracts the heck out of me right there. I wish now I had just taken a hammer and a chisel and just broken that piece off. Oh well, too late now. Actually, it's not too late. I suppose I could do it and just tumble the thing over again. <laughs> but I'm not going to. Finally, this, this last piece of Montana egg I think might be my favorite. It's small, but it has a, a cool pattern right there inside. Uh, I can't really get it to show. It's two colors in that anyway, if you can see that. Uh, a tiny little fracture there. I don't, don't care for that. Here's the blue lace agate. This first piece was almost a throwaway. It just didn't have much of the lace in it. It was mostly that outer brownish material, which once I tumbled it away, this is what I was left with, so not too interesting. This piece is really not much better. It was maybe a bad piece to start with. But this piece of blue lace agate, this one I like. This one turned out pretty good. I love that blue banding in there. So this is my favorite. Next up, we have this Malawi Classic. Obviously, this piece had lots of fractures, and there was no point in trying to break this one up. It was just going to get too small, so I decided just to polish it as is and live with it. It's got some decent color in it, I suppose, but boy, those fractures are just disconcerting. This Malawi agate broke during that tumbling process, the coarse 60-90 grit over the last couple of months. This piece broke off here. It's kind of pretty. It's small. But that left us with this, which 
which I think is pretty nice. A little fracture there I could not get out. It's got some interesting color in there. This little Malawi classic agate is my favorite. It has some banding. It's got the sort of the detail on, on the top side there. And then you see this on the edge. And that on the bottom, so kind of interesting. Nice tumble, nice polish, as you can see. Not perfect. Next up is this blue Botswana. This stuff just about always turns out nice. A little fracture there I don't care for, but it was getting pretty small. I had to stop. Nice banding in there. Kind of a cool pattern on this side. Not my favorite, but not bad. And then there's this blue Botswana agate. This one turned out pretty nice. One little area there I wish I had addressed. But otherwise, it looks like a decent stone, a pretty good tumble, nice shine. My favorite blue Botswana is this one. I really like that pattern there, that cloudy pattern. And then the banding, that, that deep banding, I think that's really cool. Yeah, this one turned out pretty nice. Next up, we have everyone's favorite crazy lace. Uh, this isn't as crazy as some crazy lace I've tumbled before. In fact, this one is kind of disappointing as crazy lace goes. I've got more I'm working on now that will really put this to shame. You'll see that video in the in the coming weeks. It does have some sort of metallic streak in there. That's interesting. And then there's this piece of the crazy lace. A little bit better than the first one. I didn't see that fracture right there, darn it. But this is more of a traditional lacy pattern. Not bad, but not my favorite. And finally, we have this piece of the crazy lace. I guess I'll call this one my favorite. None of the three are particularly great. This one though, I like a lot because of the complexity of this pattern. It's really very busy, very interesting. Lots going on inside this one. So I will give it the victory for that reason alone. Next up, we have this Desert Jasper. This usually turns out nice, tumbling. This is no exception. I think this piece is it's attractive. Not my favorite and not perfect, but it's not bad. And then there's this piece of Desert Jasper. I think a little bit better than the first one, but still not my favorite. Got some really nice color in there. And finally, this piece of the Desert Jasper, which I am going to call my favorite. It's got lots of color in it. Our last rock to look at is this petrified palm wood. I love this stuff. It turns out great when you tumble and polish it. Look at these little tube-like structures in this thing. Not quite perfect there. Then we have this piece. Pretty cool. But this piece of the petrified palm wood is my favorite. Look at this thing. It has really cool detail in it. Look at that. I love that. I could tumble this stuff all day. Just love how the patterns look. Looks like a bunch of worms in there, doesn't it? <laughs> it's kind of gross if you think of it that way. I guess we can call it worm rock. Well, there you have it. That 
represents oh, approximately six months of work. Some of these literally were tumbling for six months because it's now early September, and I believe I started this in sometime in February. <laughs> I'll have to double check. But these have been going a long time. Now, mind you, many of these were pulled out after just a few weeks. Just some of them took that long. And then you saw the polishing eight days. I think there's some good ones in here. Hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure and check out my other videos.